One reason we've had a housing bubble is that industry execs, finance industry executives were making millions in bonuses and other compensation by creating a whole new business of marketing even the worst mortgages as bright and shiny securities, putting their companies at long-term risk of collapse so they could make out like bandits in the short run. In our number three story tonight, a House committee has now voted, let's not do that anymore, Specifically, Barney Frank's Financial Services Committee sending to the full House a bill that would ban big companies from paying executives enormous amounts of money for deals that put the company at, quote, inappropriate risk. Ranking Republican Spencer Bacchus told the Associated Press, quote, politically it was very difficult for my members to stand up and fight against this. In part because executives now make up about 300 times what the average worker does, up from 35 times the average worker pay in 1978. Let's bring in Ariana Huffington, co-founder and editor-in-chief of the HuffingtonPost.com and also author of Pigs at the Trough. Ariana, thanks for coming on tonight. Great to be with you. Ariana, if we don't pay these guys millions of dollars, how will we continue to get the same caliber of leadership that has given us AIG and Citicorp and so forth and so on? Howard, that's exactly the question we should be asking ourselves. Because the real issue here is how can we align the interests of executives with the interests of shareholders and the, the interests of the company, not to mention the interests of society at large. That's really what has gone awry. So I think it's important when we talk about this that it's not about limiting um, executive compensation in absolute terms. It's about correcting all these wrong incentives that have been there that, as you pointed out, have basically made it so likely that executives put the short-term interests of their uh, compensation ahead of the interests of the company and the interests of the country. Will this bill work not just in reducing the big compensation package, but also in shielding the economy from them? Well, it's only one uh, piece of the puzzle. I mean, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we basically, I think, need to put an end to companies that are too big to fail, because if they are too big to fail, they are too big to exist. And. Um, we cannot keep socializing losses and privatizing gains, which is what we have been doing, because the taxpayer is now on the hook for trillions of dollars. But it's definitely a good first step to align um, these different incentives. You know, even if you go back to Ayn Rand, you know, the, the, the high priestess of capitalism, the favorite of Alan Greenspan, she would have been completely opposed to what has been happening, which is basically decoupling performance and reward. You had CEOs, and I write about them from what happened in 2003 with Enron and WorldCom, and then from what's happened uh, in the last uh, year or so, who basically drive their companies into the ground and in the process become phenomenally rich themselves. That was not what was intended by capitalism. Okay, so we're now going to transform you into the Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, you, and you are presiding over what Hank Paulson and George Bush saw uh, a year ago. And what do you do about it? You have a, a company like AIG, which is $185 billion, has got $185 billion of taxpayers' money. Do you let them fail? Because if you do, you know what the consequences are. How do you no, get out of this mess? No, I would mess? not have let them fail, but I would have driven a very hard bargain. I would have attached many strings, which would have included um, breaking up the company so it's no longer too big to fail, which it continues to be. And I would have definitely driven a very hard bargain when it came to uh, paying back the counterparties. Remember, we gave 100 cents to the dollar. Um, that's why um, Goldman Sachs, for example, ended up getting 12 billion dollars from the government so when Goldman Sachs comes back now and says you know look how much profit we are making no they are not yet because they're still living off taxpayer money and with taxpayer guarantees do you think Citicorp should be broken up Absolutely. Citicorp should definitely be broken up. Citicorp is basically insolvent. So we continue to subsidize a zombie bank, and we are continuing to put the country at risk. That's Let, really the key issue here. Let's look at a bank that's not insolvent, J.P. Morgan Chase, but clearly enormously big. Uh, perhaps well managed now, but maybe not in the future. Should that be broken up? Well, I think the, the way we should handle that, Howard, is to bring back a form of Glass-Steagall. Remember, the repeal of Glass-Steagall, which happened during the end of the Clinton years, was at the heart of a lot of this uh, 
crisis that we've been facing and that, as you know, has had huge consequences around the country. So the essence of Glass-Steagall is to be decouple all the different functions of banks. It served us very well since the Great Depression. We need to bring it back in some form that's compatible with our 21st century economy. And what about regulating things like derivatives, these sort of mystical securities that nobody can really put their fingers on? The Wall Street claims they uh, they help uh, make, make things more liquid and uh, help capital, but they're, without derivatives, I think uh, AIG would still be solvent, and a lot of the banks would not have happened uh, what they had. Credit default swaps are another one. That certainly drove AIG into bankruptcy. What do we do about all that stuff? Well, I think there are two things we need to do. First of all, we really need to reform the credit ratings agencies. You know, these agencies that kept giving... Um, perfect ratings to junk yeah. because they are basically you know paid by the people they are rating that has to change and and the second thing we need to do is to bring back some real regulation not the kind that the SEC was in favor of which basically let Bernie Madoff uh, get away with what he did while the SEC was pursuing Martha Stewart Ariana Huffington perhaps the next secretary of the treasury the books <laughs> is pigs at the trough nice to talk with you thank you